It's good to see. Let's turn to the Lord in prayer. Again, gracious and heavenly Father, Lord, we turn to you and thank you for a wonderful day that you've blessed us with. Thank you for the many blessings of this morning, uh, Lord, to hear from your word today and to be in the vine, God, that is you. Lord, help us to stay there as our source of life, our source of sustenance, O oh Lord. Lord, we call on that source of life and sustenance, God, for many issues that uh, our family and friends here are facing. Uh, as Brother Kazee mentioned this morning, God, there are many among us facing various trials, Lord, and sickness, death. There's family issues, emotional issues, God, so many things uh, to cause turmoil in our lives, Lord. But we can look to you, to the power found in you alone, Lord. And Lord, for that we are so thankful. Lord, we pray your blessing on tonight. I pray that you bless each person here. Strengthen them. Lord, for Brother Kazee that has returned to be with us, we again lift him up and pray that your hand would be mightily upon him, that you would empower him with your Holy Spirit, that you would give him the word you would have him to say to us this evening, God, that we would grow and be blessed in it, God, and help us just to uh, adhere the truths, God, gleaned from your Holy Word, God, to our hearts, and to live them out each day. Heavenly Father, thank you again for all of your blessings, your care, and your provision. We ask it all in Jesus' most holy and precious name. Amen. Amen. Welcome back, First Baptist. Glad you all are here. Hope you came looking for a blessing. I know we had one this morning. Wore me out all day, brother. I really enjoyed that. So glad, you, glad you're here. And uh, that was brother back there, too. There you, buddy. Uh, but glad you're here. Again, hope you came looking for a blessing because uh, you're going to get one again tonight. We're very glad to have Brother Kazee back with us. And uh, looking forward to hearing what the Lord's laid on your heart this evening. Uh, so uh, we'll, I'll get out the way, let Brother Allen keep this train rolling. Uh, so we can all have a good time. So thanks, buddy. All right. Before Chad gets down the steps, let's have a time of fellowship together. <laughs> Go ahead. Greet one another in the Lord.
Okay, let's sing together. You are my all in all. Here we go.
Thank you once again, Sister Jane, Brother Allen, and the choir. I continue to let my heart, as you do, swell in the scene of the Word of God and contemplate the words that are sung, joy, these are righteousness, and just the sweetness and the assurance that we have comes to us from God's Word and impacts us and gives us assurance by the Holy Spirit of making it all true. Thank you. If you have your Bibles, you'd come to the text with me tonight, I'm reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, beginning with verse 38. Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verse 38. It reads like this. Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, Dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. The subject is in verse 42 when our Lord says, but one thing is needful. Of course, as you can well see that this is a domestic scene, but the emphasis is upon priorities. And therefore it becomes a lesson to you and to me for our priority or priorities in life. Now my purpose is uh, not to, to emphasize on Sunday night, but uh, through our whole church life among Southern Baptists today, and I think perhaps others, sometimes uh, when you have a particular holiday, uh, it is said that, well, we won't have church that night uh, because uh, you can be with your families. And I always tease back and say, well, why do we do that? We Baptists do that on Sunday and Wednesday nights. <laughs> we just kind of do that. Our emphasis is kind of a priority in a particular time or particular place. And I simply use that as an illustration, though, but we're not examining each other's lives here. We're examining our own. And I have a mission to examine my own life as I read and study this passage of Scripture. But one thing is needful. What is the priority in my life and in your life? Now we know that uh, both of these women are disciples of the Lord Jesus. They're very good friends, and of course, they have had another friend, their brother Lazarus, as you're aware of. And so it is a family that has been dedicated to the Lord, loves the Lord Jesus. They're his disciples, they're following him. And uh, we can kind of identify with something of the struggle that's kind of going on here even within this home because we can take it and make it the struggle even within our own heart. Now we'll be careful not to belittle Martha as we look into this passage of scripture because there are some very wonderful things about her 
and uh, that we can really identify with her. And uh, I'm going to just flip over here to the Gospel of John. Uh, you may if you want to, but you know this passage of Scripture well. In the 11th chapter, when uh, Lazarus had passed away, and uh, she is concerned about his life, and he has now died, and you recall, she said, if you'd have been here, Lord Jesus, uh, he would not have died. And Martha said unto Jesus, Lord, if thou had been here, my brother had not died, verse 22, but I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it to thee. And Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha saith unto him, I know he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. But Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? And she saith unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which had come into the world. That's a three-point sermon in itself, isn't it? Her faith given to the Lord. So she's a wonderful woman, really, of faith. And so we would be careful not to exercise ourselves with our own life. At the same time, what I'd like for us to look for in just a few minutes is to look at Martha and to look at Mary and to look then at the differences between them. So first of all, let's look at Martha. You look at the very first verse of our text, verse 38. It came to pass as they went that he entered to a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. So she receives Christ and when he comes in, she is ready to entertain him. So right there, we can begin. Let me ask you, and I ask myself, is Jesus the centerpiece of your home? Is he really? Is he the centerpiece? Is every bit of conduct, every conversation, everything that you and I do, is he the very center of our home? And if he is, how do we entertain him? Do we let him speak to us? There's an old saying that if you show me a man who reads his Bible, I'll show you a man to whom God speaks. And the adverse of that is, if you show me a man who doesn't read his Bible, I'll show you a man to whom God does not speak. So do we listen to him? Is this paramount in my life? Is it paramount in our home? And then, of course, is there this communion going on with Jesus? And uh, it's not just a parable. It's, it's not just something flaunting. Do we talk to the Lord? Do we pray? Do we recognize this admission that we have to enter in before the very presence of God and talk to him? Speak to him, even as Sunday school class this morning and Brother Roger teaching there about uh, praying and about making our request and about leaning everything upon the Lord. Do, do we take it to him and give to him? Is he, again, the centerpiece of our home? And then in the second place, she wanted to serve him. And that's not all bad, beloved to serve him, to be a follower of what he is teaching here in God's word. There's nothing wrong with providing a meal and cleaning up afterwards, is there, if he is in our presence. So we seek really to serve the Lord Jesus. And there are plenty of admonitions in God's word, as you and I know, of which we're often asking for forgiveness of sin. But nevertheless, it is there. And is there a trying in my heart and in your heart? Are we serving Christ? There's much teaching and preaching on this. And by that I mean I think most churches are 
almost overly concerned, are we participating in something? Are we serving? And that's a wonderful facet of our own life. But what was the problem that was going on here? And here's where it comes up. And verse 40 says, but Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore come and help me. What was the problem? Look at those particular words in there. She was cumbered. That is, there was pressing upon her. Really, the Greek word gives an emphasis that she was distracted. There was Jesus and he was talking to Mary. And I suppose, like most of us, he'd like to listen in a little bit on the conversation, but things needed to get ready for him. And so she was distracted. And our Lord is graciously pointing out as he's cumbered. And the Lord, dost thou not care to my sister? But Jesus answered, verse 41, and said, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. Translating that, she was worried and she was upset with what was taking place. She loved the Lord. No doubt she was wanting to do the right thing. So she sought to serve him, to care for him, to show her love for him. And there isn't anything wrong with that, of course. But Jesus confronts her because it is a question of priorities. So then, she forgot his purpose. One thing is needful. Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away. What's the problem? This cumberness, this feather, this waiting on the Lord. She is forgetting to let the Lord minister to her. Some way, even today, I think in church life, we've forgotten the God of miracles because we're putting so much emphasis on what am I doing for the Lord? Again, now, parenthesis one more time, qualify it one more time. That's not wrong. We need to be doing something for the Lord. But I wonder if we are really taking the place of letting God do something for us. He's a God of miracles. And when you look back at all the saints of God, when they begin to give a witness and testimony, it was never what I was doing for the Lord. It's what he was doing for me. That's the great blessing. You recall that our Lord was teaching and uh, in Matthew chapter 21, 25, Jesus called them unto him. You know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them, and they that are great exercise authority over them. But it shall not be among you, but whosoever shall be great among you, let him be your minister, and whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant, even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life for a ransom for many. Jesus, he said, I didn't come for you to wait on me. I came for you to let me wait on you to minister. That's why we need this careful priority and this careful balance that we so speak of. What is the need? The need is really to see God and be drawn to him. And I can't do that without the word, without being with God's people, without study, and without a type of prayer, a time designated, given unto him. You recall that wonderful passage in the prophet Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 6, when he had this great vision of our God and I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up in his train filled the temple and those seraphims and cherubims crying and saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. 
the doorpost shook. And then they said, I woe is me, I'm undone. I'm a man of unclean lips. I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. Mine eyes have seen the King and the Lord of hosts. And then those beings came and touched his tongue with fire and cleansed him. And then this is the wonderful verse of which we refer. And it came to the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. A glimpse of God walking with him, being with him, in the sweetness of fellowship. Then as we were, this purpose of God, this purpose of Christ of which we have read, I, I didn't come for you to minister to me. I came to minister to you. So then we look at Mary. And where do we find her? A certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. That's where it is. That's the priority as she comes to him. She is listening to him. It's a high principle to serve him, but it's a higher principle to be devoted to him. And only as we are devoted unto him is there this willingness, this want, and this desire really to serve him. What's happening to Mary is, and he says it very open, Martha, there's one thing needful. Mary's chosen that. She's letting me minister to you. And so much that God has to do a work in us before he can do a work through us. But sometimes in church activity in life, and again, I'm qualifying, but my purpose is certainly not to put the church down, but I just think so much of the 20th century church is when somebody comes into the church, what we need to do is get them busy, get an activity going, get a job going, get them going, get them involved in the life of the church. we so matter. But beloved, listen, the first duty of the church is not evangelism. It is not service. It is worship. That's the first duty of the church, worship. It is not to be taken lightly when we speak of coming together in God's house in preparation of song and singing, preparation of heart and praying, of coming together in God's house to worship and to praise the Lord. Not to be so critical if there's some emotional value, not to be so critical as the purpose that we come for God to speak to our hearts. He wants devotion. So he says, Martha, you're careful, you're troubled about many things, but one thing is needful. Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from hers. Service is good, but it's second place to devotion, work in us. You know, we try to keep ourselves before the Lord, and I know there are activities that are going on and so good, so I want to be careful with that. And I know you've been through a wonderful Bible school, and I know Bethlehem's doing theirs now, and Others are, and my, my, how that is so needful to teach. And the, I, I still like the pledges, don't you? And one of them says, I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word, and will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path that I might not sin against God. Some of us adults could make that pledge ourselves, could we not? This devotion to the Lord Jesus Christ. And then, of course, that kind of devotion 
will begin to spill over as it should. It doesn't mean that everything works perfection. A little introspection into our own lives will keep us all humble. There's no preaching down on this. I certainly want to tell you that. But nevertheless, there is a preaching to self, and this is what Jesus is doing when he's ministering to Mary and her devotion and letting him speak to her and teach him of her ways. This learning process. And so this gathering together, how important it is to worship and to give praise unto the Lord. So I bid us tonight, even as we study the word of God, and, and the church is reaching out and touching others. Not being here, and I don't mean to be so personal, Dolores and I find ourselves uninformed and Today, my heart was broken when you began to share with so many of sickness in the life of the church and our people and, uh, you know, been in the hospital and home. And you can list them and you name them, I know, but I, I just, uh, it was just kind of overwhelming this morning when I heard the voices of God people speak about their kinsmen ties, their loves, their husband or mother that you know service unto the Lord it's a wonderful place isn't it that God could use us to serve to reach out into the life of the church to show the compassion of the Lord Jesus and I think Jesus had that concern when he walked about and he saw six people God's word says he, he was moved with compassion. You know what compassion means? Come means like a committee or comrade means together and passion means to hurt. And so when it said Jesus had compassion, it meant that he hurt with them. And do we hurt for one another? When trouble comes along, when hurt and pain, when stumbling, when opportunity comes along, when yes, hurt, sadness, disappointment, there's plenty of that, but do we have compassion? That's the togetherness of brothers and sisters in Christ, and that's what it is that Jesus is teaching and teaching us. And so he says, she has chosen that good part. She's let me minister to her. And then this little ending, which shall not be taken away from her. Because it surges in her heart and it draws her close to the Lord Jesus. And I think all of us have experienced the other side of that. When we knew that we weren't in his perfect will. But still, he loves us. Isn't that amazing? He loves us when we're wrong. He loves us when we're more interested in serving than in worship. But he still has that compassion. So I pray that not just you, I pray in my own life with that introspection I speak of. Philip, where is your devotion? Are you entertaining the Lord? Are you praying? Is your heart open that God can use you to glorify his name? I've said it once. I'll say it one more time in closing. God has to do a work in us before he can do a work through us. Let us pray. Father in heaven, how we thank thee for the patience and love of our Lord Jesus. How we thank thee, Father, for the word of God that brings conviction to our heart. And Father, as we have so read and sought to be so careful, we know that 
both these dear ladies loved the Lord and sought to be used by him. But sometimes we do get our priorities a little out of order. And so we're just praying tonight as a church, the body of Christ, that we might, might Father, seek ever to walk with thee, the sweetness of fellowship and to worship thee and to praise thee with an open heart that God would use us for his glory and for his purpose. For we pray in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen.